Um, so I'm just here to give an experience talk, um, to share a bit about my experience at university, and to really encourage you guys um, as you prepare and go off to uni and those that are moving on in your study to second year, final year, I know how tough it can be. Yeah, so my name's Kanayo. I recently graduated from the University of Surrey. <laughs> I studied psychology there and it was an amazing time. Um, I was very much involved in the Christian Fellowship there and very much involved with my local church there. So I definitely encourage those that are going into university, make sure you plug into a fellowship. This is why we have the university reps at the end who are going to share with you the fellowships at the universities, how to get connected, search for churches, you know, do a church call. You know, in university, they're all about this, um, what do they call it, bar crawl? Yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do it. Do church call. You go, church one week, follow a week, let me go and see this church. The one where you, you know, mmm. I was like, mmm. Yeah. <laughs> and you plug in and you serve in that church. First of all, I want to congratulate all of you because you being here is amazing. You could be doing anything. But what it tells me and what it shows your peers is that you're actually serious about going to university and remaining saved and being used by God. I congratulate you. And preparation is so, so key. This is something that as you were doing the question and answer from the last session, God was like, you have to touch on preparation and planning. It is so, so key. And that's what each and every one of you are doing here. But I want to um, just highlight a scripture in Luke. Luke 14, verses 28 to 32. And I'll quickly read because I'm pressed for time. It says, For which of you intending to build a tower... Sit if not down first and count the cost, whether you have sufficient resources to finish it. Which of you will sit down and say, I want to build a building? And you haven't thought about the cost of it, you haven't thought about the resources, you haven't thought about what you need to put in. As all of you are here at the University Power Conference, I can see that you are thinking and planning about how you're going to go to university, what resources you need as a university student. And I congratulate you guys for that. And I think throughout the rest of the evening, you will go home with serious tools, not just for yourself, but also for your mates that didn't come. <laughs> Help them. Um, so I wanted to share a bit about how to serve at university, because you're not just going there to get a degree or do a degree. You do life at university. Pure life. You're out of your comfort zone. You might go with people that you know, but people change, trust me. This is a new environment. This is where you can find out, you know what, God, who do you call me? Have I been living up to the expectations of my parents? Or am I truly walking as a child of you? Can I really depend on you? Can I really pray to you? Do I need someone there to back me up? University is a time of growth. It's not to scare you guys, because <laughs> you guys are looking at me serious. But it's a time of true, true growth. And I encourage you to enjoy every single moment of it. Having said that, there will be hard times. Because you being a Christian means that you will be rejected. Yeah. We cannot brush past that. There will, be, there will be people that will bug you and be like, but why don't you do this? Ah, oh, you're too stuck up. You're holier than thou. You're this, you're that, the other. You will be rejected. Why? But we are called to be Christ-like. Christ who was rejected. Who are we not to be rejected? So always keep that at the back of your mind. You know what? If people push me away, if they say, oh, you're this, you're that, it's nothing to do with me as an individual. They can't handle what's inside of me. If time permits, I, I would have done a, a little illustration that I like to do, but we'll see how we, we do. <laughs> Where's Ore? Keep me on track. <laughs> but yeah, you will be rejected, and it's important to bear that in mind. It is important. In last year's conference, I said to everyone that we need to be able to say no. Everybody say, say no. Say no. We have to be able to say no. The only thing you owe an individual is love. And loving them 
isn't joining them in their foolishness. That is not love. Let nobody fool you into thinking that is love. There are ways that we can reach out to people. When Jesus was reaching out to the unbelievers, he did not join them in their foolishness, right? So there are ways. We are in this world. We are not of this world. Amen. Amen. Everybody catching on to it? Is it deep? (laughs) I want to encourage you that, of course, gaining a degree or a qualification is very, very important. But the journey is just as important. And that is what is of interest to God. That journey. Because on that day when you graduate, can you look back and say, actually, I have changed. You know. And there will be ups and downs. There will be times when the assignment is cracking your head. But being a Christian, you, you have a solid advantage. Use it. The Holy Spirit is in you. Do you know how many times yeah, I'll be writing an essay and I say, God, <laughs> I don't know what to write. But Holy Spirit, teach me. And he will teach me what my lecturers failed to teach me. One lecturer was moving dodgy. He gave us one new assignment, um, case study for psychology and the law. We've never done this type of assignment before. Usually, lecturers being kind, they will give you an example. This one, I, me being a loud mouth in the class, I raised my hand, I said, his name, what was his name, Rob, Rob Nash. I said, Rob, can we get an example, please, you know, because this is the first time we're doing this type of assignment. He said, no. And me, yeah, I said, whoo. <laughs> Shame, wow. I went home, I said, Lord, I don't know how to start this thing. I don't know the head and the tail of this coursework. I prayed. I said, well, I didn't start the coursework. Home. <laughs> the next lecture, come and see this guy. Guys, I'm so sorry. You know, I should have given you an example. It was so bad of me. I said, wait, is this the same guy? Is this the same guy? But trust me, God can really deliver. When you partner with God on the degree, it's you and God's degree on. Because you will use it for his glory. So don't say it's my degree, it's my qualification. It's all good. But when you partner with God, you cannot fail. He will not allow you to fail. But you have to do your bit. You have to put in the work. Nobody's saying be lazy. We were speaking in the last session. Mimi shared, be efficient with your time. Plan, prepare, persist, proceed. Become an achiever. Amen. I like them peas, you know. <laughs> Plan, prepare, persist. When other people are giving up, saying, ah, oh, we are all failing. Say, <laughs> it's not my portion. Your portion is very different. You are called to be an example. People should come to you for help. Amen. That is who you are. Amen. Amen. Are we getting it? The final thing that I would like to touch on, again, is like the question and answer kind of stole what I wanted to say, but it's good, because I can share it with you guys. People always think, oh, but balancing university and being a Christian, you know, it's so difficult. How do I find that balance between serving in church and blah, blah, blah. Excuses, excuses. What you are passionate about, you will pursue at all costs. Yeah, some of my friends, they... University students doing football on the side. They manage the two. And the football is even a hobby. Christianity is your identity. It's not something you manage on the side. It is who you are. Therefore, Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Meaning that all the stuff that you thought, oh God, I need to bump this up to first place because it requires more of my time. Mm -mm, That thing will pursue you. It will pursue you. As long as you arrange your order, your priority being God, number one, at all costs. (laughs) Let nothing cause you to shift God to second place. You cannot afford it. You cannot afford it. Say, I cannot afford it. I cannot afford it. That is your mark of distinction. When I see you, I ought to see God in you, working in you, through you. And when someone comes into contact with you, they ought to feel the God in you. There should be something different about you as you step into that campus. 
and some in my mom did, being you know the typical Nigerian mom. As we were walking through Surrey University, huh? my mom was saying, I take authority over this place. So I take <laughs> but it's true. Everywhere you step, I take authority. Even when we went into Rubik's, Rubik's is what they use for nightclub and events. So I said, I take authority over this place. <laughs> but it's real. Because you have that power as a believer. Yeah? Um, Alright, how am I doing for time? I should wrap up. God bless you, sir. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the last thing that I really want to say is I'm excited for all of you guys. I'm excited, I'm excited for this journey that you're about to embark on. And for those of you that are actually going to complete it, I am super excited for you. Remember, I'm going to summarize, partnership with God. This is your degree with God. Yeah. It's not for you to hold on to. It's not your crutch. Mm. He will use it for his glory. Mm. When you partner with God, you cannot fail. Mm. Be able to say no to the people that you need to say no to. Mm. Don't forget that you may be rejected. It's okay. Mm. We are in the body of Christ. There's so many people that you can speak to. Yeah. Your life is not dependent on certain friendship groups. Mm. Yeah? And I believe that is me. I hope you are encouraged. And make sure you speak to us.